Hello, everybody, and welcome to a brand new podcast here with the Up Life Studios. We have our good friend Robert G. Allen in the studio with his very first edition of Cracking the Code with Robert G. Allen, a brand new podcast we're launching to the world, and we could not think of a better person to help us crack the code of how to live a better life. Robert, introduce yourself a little bit to us. Uh, tell people a little bit about you, your real estate background, your book background, like you've done it all. <laughs> Lay it on us. What, what's, talk well, to us about who you are and what you do. Well, I started off with a dream to become a millionaire, and I started investing in real estate right out of college and made my first million. It took me about three or four years, and then I wrote a book that became an all-time best-selling real estate investment book called Nothing Down, How to Buy Real Estate with Little or No Money Down. Followed that with Creating Wealth, also number one New York Times million copy bestseller. Then the challenge about a challenge I did going to an unemployment line and picking people and showing them how to make money. That's incredible. Um, yeah, it was an incredible challenge. Then I wrote uh, Multiple Streams of Income, Multiple Streams of Internet Income. Uh, then I co-authored with uh, Mark Victor Hansen of Chicken Soup for the Soul fame. We wrote uh, The One Minute Millionaire. Uh, we wrote cash, uh, Cracking the, the Millionaire Code. Yeah, talking about cracking the code. And then we wrote Cash in a Flash. And my recent book is called The Four Maps of Happy Successful People. I like to write I, I, because when yeah. you write a book, it gets in the hands of a person who needs it. They read it. It changes their life. So it's a very powerful th uh, career that I have. Yeah, it's amazing. So I'm going to ask you to brag just a little bit more about yourself. How many books have you moved through all those books? Millions and millions and millions of books. Um, I'm, more six, I'm more happy about the fact that those uh, have generated millions, of, uh, well, thousands of millionaires. Yes. Um, um, we did a test one year to just see how much money have our students made. We had like 3,000 of them uh, in, in, uh, told us what they were doing. We had 270 millionaires that year. Holy they had bought, um, uh, uh, they had earned a profit of $1.2 billion. That's with a B. Uh, yeah, exactly, with a B. Wow. They, they generated, the average millionaire made like one point. Four million dollars, uh, and the average person of, of the people submitted was three hundred thousand dollars. So, you know, we 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 it works. It works. Yeah. If you really want to create some wealth in your life, if you want to crack the code in your life, then there are some there. There's a vault that you have inside of you with all kinds of resources inside of you that are all locked up because you haven't figured out what the combination lock is. And in this podcast, we're going to show you. Your, your combination lock, how you discover what the numbers are. If you're missing a number, the vault stays closed. Yeah, for sure. If you figure out the number and the order of the numbers, you open the vault and everything you've ever wanted. So that's what we do in this podcast. This is amazing. Like you guys literally have an opportunity to hear from one of the greatest about unlocking the potential in your life. We're so excited to have you. I think, Robert, one of the first things that we wanted to talk about and something that you're very well known for is the secret that that part of the combination of the lock is the secret to buying property with no money down. Um, this is something that you've spent your life doing, created millionaires and and billions of dollars worth of inventory uh, moved. I mean, this is incredible, right? But it makes me think just a little bit, where do we go wrong in teaching people about money? As a society, I feel like we're a little broken and we have a limited <laughs> mindset. Where do we go wrong? Well, who teaches you about money? Do you learn it in school? Mm. No, these people are employees. And frankly, if you want to create wealth, you're not going to be an employee. That'll ne never take you there. You have to be an entrepreneur. So who teaches entrepreneurs? You, you don't learn it in school. You know, either you have those natural talents or you have a parent or a, a cousin or an uncle or somebody, a friend, somebody who's doing it, who can coach you. So nobody teaches us. They, they teach us how to fail in school, really. They don't teach you a mindset. They don't teach you mindset in school. They no. teach you stuff on how to get a job to be a wage slave for the rest of your life and then retire on half salary. I mean, that's not my, my idea of success. It's, it's broken. It, it, totally, totally broken. Um, and the, what, what happened, I, I bought into that myth myself. Uh, I graduated with an MBA. Well, what does an MBA train you to do is to be an employee in a corporation somewhere. Yeah. And fortunately, bad recession that year, couldn't find a job. Interesting. But I had read a book Two books, actually. One was Think and Grow Rich. Okay. And Famous all book. entrepreneurs read that book. Yeah. 
And number, the second book was How I Turned $1,000 into a, to a Million Dollars in Real Estate in My Spare Time. I found it in the library of my brother-in-law, who unfortunately did extremely well, left his family very well, but died of a brain tumor. Oh, no. And um, in his library, when I went to the funeral, I saw these two books, picked them out, started reading them when I was younger, before I went to college. And then when I couldn't find a job, I thought... That, well, I'll just go. I've a, I, my dad had given me $1,000 for graduation. So I said, that's what I'll do. If nobody will hire me, then wh why work for somebody else? I mean, yeah. like, I really don't want to work for somebody else. <laughs> I, I wanted to make a million on the side as my side hustle. Yeah. And I said, well, let's just make it a full-time hustle. That's a really cool side hustle, a million-dollar side hustle. Exactly. <laughs> so that's what I did. And I made my first million within, within three to four years. Wow. And then I wrote this book, uh, Nothing Down. And so... The, 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 the one thing that people don't understand about money is they are taught to believe this, this lie. There is a lie. And this is the lie. And I hear it almost every day. Someone will say to me, well, but, it, but it takes money to make money. And I'm going to kill that lie right now. I want you never to say that or even think it again. Because most great fortunes always started with just an idea. Right. Now, I proved that you can buy it without money by this challenge I did. I said, send me to any city, take away my wallet, give me, give me $100 for living expenses, and in 72 hours I'll buy an excellent piece of real estate using none of my money. I wanted to prove that what the banker says you need in order to succeed, which is the four C's of a banker, cash, cash flow, collateral, credit, these are... The financial institutions, this is the lie that they spread around the world. They, they, they make you think that if you don't have all four of those and are strong in all four of those, that you can't, first of all, can't borrow money from them, and that you can't be successful in any financial area of your life, and that's a lie. When, I, when they took me to San Francisco, they took away all those things. They took, I had no credit. No cash, no cash flow, oh, geez. no income. So you showed up on the streets of San Francisco with nothing. 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 Wow. We, the, LA, the LA Times challenged me to prove this challenge that I had said on my advertisement in the Los Angeles uh, newspaper. I said, send me to any city, take away my wallet, give me a $100 bill, and $70 hours I'll buy an extra piece of real estate using none of my own money. <laughs> so the LA Times saw the ad. They said, this guy is a charlatan. There's no <laughs> way that he can do that. He's bragging about this. So they call me. And they said, we challenge you, Robert, we, we challenge you. We're going to meet you at 6 o'clock in the morning at the Marriott Hotel at LAX, where our reporter will show you where we're going to fly you, and we're going to fly to that city, and he is going to take away your wallet, and we're going to prove that you're a fraud. Wow. I have 72 hours. We arrive in San Francisco. Can you imagine a worse city to go no, to? No, I, I literally was just thinking that. That has to be worst city. one of the toughest ones. Takes away my wallet and gives me five $20 bills. And this is a little side story. I put the, f the, $5, five, the, the five $20 bills down on the counter. And then I turned to give him my wallet and walked away from the $100 in oh, cash. No. And left it in the middle of a busy airport, went to go buy a newspaper where it's a good you know, clue to finding deals and couldn't find my money. And I had to retrace my steps and found the money. I mean, talk about buying with nothing down, like yeah. really nothing down. <laughs> but I found my money, I was just like, whoa, my gosh. And uh, off we went into San Francisco in the bus. We went to spend the next three days. I bought my first property in uh, 24 hours. And then uh, the challenge was over. I did it. And then I thought to myself, we got two days left. I said to the reporter, which is a better story? Boastful investor buys one property and wins the challenge, or boastful investor buys more yeah. property? He said, well, the more you buy, since I lost, the, big, the, the more you buy, the, the more I lose, the bigger the story. The better so, the story, right? Exactly. Yeah. So we went for the next... Um, 28 hours, and we bought six more oh properties gosh. from four separate sellers. They, some, some of them had two. And I bought these properties using techniques, the techniques of um, the 50, I call them the 50 nothing down techniques. Now, okay. we're going to cover that today. And we're, frankly, in, on, on our podcast yeah. over the next several 
several months, we're going to go deep into all of these techniques. I want to cover all 50 techniques, but today I want to talk about the mindset of nothing down. Uh, the, the first lie is that it takes money to make money. I proved that is wrong. What I proved is that real wealth, real wealth with a capital W, always starts inside you. And then you create external wealth. That's called wealth with a small w. That's material wealth. Real estate, stock market, businesses, uh, you know, forex, whatever you want to invest. And what I tried to show is that, that I had inside me that day when the reporter gave me my five $20 bills, I had the four internal C's. I had creativity. That's a C word. I had confidence. Um, I had commitment. I had clarity. Yeah. Uh, there are a lot of C words that go in there, but these things were part of my character. That's another C word. They are internal. Always wealth comes from inside you. If you don't have money because you don't have the external wealth, but you have the internal C's, that's a good place to start. So, and so, so I was trying to show that when you take away the, the wealth with a small w, I still had capital W wealth, and I turned that into money. I made millions of dollars that day, because or that, those three days, those 72 hours, because that story has turned into the, 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 the story of my lifetime. Yeah. Um, I talk about the story that changed well, my life. Well, and you I are Mr. No Money Down, right? I yeah. mean, that, that is nothing what, down. Yeah, nothing down. That's I amazing. Bought, uh, well, it wasn't actually nothing down. I used $80 of the 100 that he gave me, <laughs> and I gave him $20 back in we'll, change. We'll give you a mulligan on that one. <laughs> we'll give you a mulligan. So, so this is interesting to me. What does, because you hear this oftentimes, like, like nothing down, right? What does, what does nothing down mean in oh, the game of real estate? Great question. It's a misconception there. They think that the seller actually accepts zero down and that... Uh, that he walks away or she walks away with nothing, zero, and you invest nothing. And one of the techniques, yes, that does happen. Very rarely, maybe one in a couple of hundred times, okay. where you actually buy a property where you put nothing and the seller gets nothing. That's one technique. But technically, really, it's not your money. Remember I said, if you don't have the cash, if you don't have the credit, if you don't have the cash flow, if you don't have the collateral... Somebody does. Right. And you can always partner with somebody okay. for you to use their financial resources okay. to meet your lack of financial resources. So a lot of this will, will ultimately depend on uh, some connections, right? And we'll talk a little bit about how to do some networking a little later on. And the network you create is really going to be uh, instrumental in doing a no, uh, nothing down type of a deal, right? Yeah. However... Um, some of you say, well, I don't know rich people. Uh, how do I get those kind of connections? Well, when I was in San Francisco, I knew nobody. Yeah. I, I didn't call a friend of mine on the phone and say, hey, meet me at, the, <laughs> meet me me some at Starbucks and we'll yeah. <laughs> <laughs> give me your wallet. No, I, I, had to, I had to make relationships with people in a very short period of time. And it's, it's one of the secrets of negotiating. And I, we don't have time to go into that today. Yeah. Uh, but in one of my other podcasts, I'm going to talk about the secrets of how you negotiate. Uh, and I'll, I'll, I'll tell you one of the things right, right, yeah, right now. Um, they've got to trust you. That means you must be trustworthy. Sure. That means there, there cannot be any part of your body that has, that has any desire to steal, take away, defraud, do anything illegal, immoral, or unethical. They've got to believe that you have their best interests in heart yeah. before your best interests in heart. So th this, this had taken me you know, years to develop. So when I'm talking to a seller and I'm saying to that seller, you're going to sell me your property. I'm going to give you nothing. You're going to sell me your property. You don't even know me. And I, in order just to get to that point in the conversation, They've got to trust me, and yeah. it's almost immediate. And I'm going to teach you the secrets of how to do that, but not on this podcast, okay? It, man, and that takes a lot of hoops, but to walk up to somebody and say, you don't know me, but you're going to sell me your house. Exactly. And like so, that, that, yeah, you're right. I mean, that, that, that level of trust, it, it's got to be there. It's got to be oozing from, well, your, from your being, right? It oozes from my voice. Yes. So the first thing we did in San Francisco is I got on the telephone, and I made hundreds of phone calls. Okay. 
And I, I didn't reach most sellers are not home. They're at work or somewhere else. So I'm going to leave a message on the phone, and I'm going to, they're going to hear the tenor of my voice, the timber of my voice. Yeah. And I'm going to say, hi, my name is Robert Allen. I'm here in San Francisco. I'm looking to buy a property in the next three days because I'm, I'm leaving shortly thereafter. I'd like to find a property from a seller who really needs to sell, who doesn't really need a lot of money, and yet would love to find somebody they can trust that they would be willing to sell that property to me, and I'm happy to meet you and talk to you about it. But if you know somebody like that, or if that's you, here's my phone number. Please call me back. Let's talk. Uh, I want you to win. I Interesting. Want... Okay, so did you hear? I'm chatty. Yeah, yeah. Um, now, I left that message dozens and dozens and dozens of times, so... and I got zero response all day long. Interesting. So I'd I was, imagine at that point in time, the, the newspaper guy is like, oh, yes, he's going to fail. Exactly. Well, I'll tell you what we did. We went to the Tenderloin District of San Francisco. If you know where that is, you probably shouldn't know where it is. <laughs> it's the, the red light district of San Francisco. Okay. And we could, well, I needed to find a hotel where I could spend the night with no credit card. Oh. So I had to pay cash. So the rent that night was $35 of which I split with the, with the LA Times reporter. We got two beds in the room, not wow. just one, into a room that night. He paid $17.50, I paid $17.50. I needed a telephone, and so we, we moved into the room about four or five o'clock that afternoon after me trying all kinds of things that failed, by the way. I tried techniques, strategies I thought might work, and I blew up in my face. But so we shifted our strategy to, to do the phone calling, and by 10, 12 that night, I was exhausted, getting a little nervous. Yeah. The reporter's in the bed next to me taking notes as I'm there calling after call after call. As the call. sweat is coming down the forehead. Oh, yes, the sweat's coming down my forehead. And at 10, 12 that night, the phone rang, and he said, are you the guy that wants to buy the property with nothing down? I said, as, as it happens, so happens, I am that guy. And he said... I have a property I'd like to sell you with nothing down. My officer in, in um, Burlingame, I think, was a little south of San Francisco. I'll meet you there at my office tomorrow at 10 o'clock. I'll have a contract all drawn up. Uh, you'll need to bring a dollar because we need a dollar to make it legal. And uh, it'll be ready to sign. I said, fantastic. Done. And And I didn't know what the technique was. I didn't know... I'd never been to his office. I didn't know he had been. His name, his first name was Rocky, believe it or not. Oh. I was just the first time I thought about that. And uh, he had a nice, very beautiful office. He was a real estate investor. And this is a misconception about nothing down. When you talk about finding a highly motivated seller, sometimes it, you make the assumption that you're going to have to buy from a property, a property from a seller who is desperate. And that for you're going to take advantage of that desperation. Right. And a lot of people don't like that, even thinking of doing that. Well, Rocky was not desperate. He had fixed up this property. So he bought it as a bargain. He fixed it up, put his own money into it. He'd, he'd improved his value dramatically. He had refinanced it and pulled all his money out. Therefore, the money he put in and a little bit of profit he had pulled back out. And he was going to sell me the property for nothing down. I would literally put $1 down and I would make him monthly payments mm. on the notes he was going to create for me. This is a pretty technical example, so I may not explain it. Yeah, we'll, we'll stick high level today and give people an insight to that a little later on. B bottom line was he taught me something. I'd never knew this nothing down technique. And when he showed it to me, I went, holy smokes. <laughs> <clears throat> the seller walked out of that closing with $15,000 in cash that I didn't give him. Yeah. He sold the note that mm -hmm. I gave him, created for him, and got $15,000 in cash from selling the note. Now, that, like, that's, that's too complicated to go into here today. What I'm trying to say is that, that the seller wasn't desperate. He was just looking for a buyer that he could trust. And he found me, and I bought it, and... Um, as they say, the rest is history. So, so I know people are going to be listening to this thinking, yeah, right. That was, I mean, you did it three times. Good for you. But like, how rare is it for someone to buy a property with Ooh. no money down? Is, I mean, like, can, can I do it? Can I go out and do it? Ah, boy, that's a great question. Um, there are always highly motivated sellers. It doesn't matter how hot 
you know, real estate market is or how cold. So let me give you two examples, yeah. 2008, 2011. We know that real estate investors went upside down. Yes. And my friends went in and bought thousands of those properties at 20 cents on the dollar. Wow. Because skept speculators, well, you never want to speculate. You want to always buy bargains. That's what we do as an investor. And they were speculating, buying at high retail prices, hoping it would go up even higher. Dumb, dumb, dumb. Smart investors bought thousands of properties and made fortunes because the market turned and became hotter again. Now, you know, here we are in a hot market. Why is it so hot? Well, first of all, because of the pandemic, a lot of people weren't, the builders weren't building nearly as much, so the supply became short, short. And therefore, a short period of time, the supply is going to be really constricted. And what's going to happen? It, the demand, if there's high demand and short supply, prices are going to go up. Sure. Will that correct? Yes, it will correct. I don't know how long it will take. It might take a year or two or three. But there will come a time when there will be an oversupply. And then some, something will happen to the economy and demand will drop. And guess what? Prices will, will flatten, maybe even drop again. Because now we're used to things when property, property prices drop. Yeah. So during really cold times, like 2008 to 2011, there might have been 20, 30% of the sellers were desperate. They had to get rid of it. Today, in hot times, it's 1% to 3%. Oh, okay. That means if I, if, I, if I look at 1,000 properties, I know that 10 to 30 of them will be owned by sellers who, for some reason, they became highly motivated sellers. It's a, there's an acronym that I love. It's called Don't Wanter Conditions. A don't wanter is a person who don't want his real estate or her real estate. They don't want it. Um, they, they, why? Well, D stands for death or divorce. Mm. Uh, do you know people who have died and left their, their real estate and, yeah. had to, and the heirs didn't want it? Sure. The heirs needed to sell it to split up the asset? Well, that happens every day. Uh, you know, 100,000 people a day are going to die. And therefore, you have all these opportunities. Divorce, half of the mar marriages are going to go end in divorce. Yeah. When that happens, they don't want that real estate. It reminds them of the disaster of their marriage. They don't want it. They hate it, as a matter of fact. So they want to get rid of it. They, they, you know, and sometimes I, I heard of a guy, <laughs> this is a true story. He sold his home for $100 in cash for his equity, you know, because he was responsible for selling the property. And the deal in the divorce settlement was the wife would get half of the, of the, of the proceeds. Oh, no. So she got 50 bucks $50. and he got 50 bucks. And that was why he, he stuck it to her, you know. And somebody um, walked away really happy. Exactly. T totally. Um, now, it, uh, th that's a funny story. I mean, obviously... You don't want to do that kind of thing. I mean, that's just kind of not nice. But I remember I, I read a, a newspaper. I was on a radio show. And I'm going to say, this is how you buy, this is how you find highly motivated sellers. You go to the newspaper. And in the newspaper that day was an ad that said, this is the headline. I'm down. Kick me. Oh, no. I'll never forget that. Oh, jeez. <laughs> so am I going to call on that ad? Oh, yeah. yeah I'm going to sure. call on that ad because they're trying to say, I don't want it. I want to get rid of this property. Uh, this is, this is the, the, the thing you got to understand. Everyone's going to tell you, even real estate agents will tell you, it's hot. The market's so hot, you know. No, you know, they put, they put a property on the market, and we have 15 offers yeah. to buy that one property. There's no way you can find a highly motivated seller, they'll tell you, and that's baloney. Oh, yes, they're harder to find. But using this acronym, don't want our conditions, the O is an obsolete property, a property that's, that needs to be re repaired or fixed up. N is somebody who, you know, I go down the list, you know, T is taxes, S is sickness. There, there are just, there are 20 wow. reasons why people somebody would ditch are that desperate property. to get rid of their property. And so you have to have a problem finding glasses on. You're looking for yeah. people with those kind of problems. You don't want property problems. You want people problems. Ooh, you don't want take. Will you say that one time again for me? You don't want property problems. You want people problems. Okay. Meaning if the property has a big problem, you got to fix it up. Is It's just much riskier. I want to find someone who has an excellent property with a people problem. 
And therefore, I'm looking for people who have all kinds of different problems than, than their real estate, and therefore, I need to be an expert at finding people problems. Amazing. Find the, find the problems and the people, not the property. I there you that. go. Um, all right. So listen, we're about done, but I want to throw one more question at you. Um, what is, like, you've been in real estate for so long, and you've got so many secrets to pass on, and we're going to dive into a bunch of those. But what is the best and the worst thing about real estate? Because certainly, like you said, <laughs> 08, 2011, we saw some highs for investors and people getting in and, and 11, you know, same thing. But now we're seeing some kind of waves. Like, tell us, like, give us the best and the worst about it. The, the best and the worst thing about real estate is the same word. Okay. Yeah. And that word is illiquidity. Ooh, illiquidity. Mean, illiquidity. The stock market is liquid. I can sell it in five seconds and get my money back. Yep. It just might be at a wrong time. But real estate is illiquid, and because it's illiquid, it takes a week, a two week, a month, a two months, six months to sell that property. What if you need the money now? It forces you to be flexible, and therefore I love the fact that real estate is illiquid. Uh, also, when I'm trying to sell it, I hate that. Yes. You know, of course, I, I want it to be able to sell it and get my money tomorrow. But be, when I'm buying, I want it to be as illiquid as possible because the seller needs the cash. Okay. Illiquid. Everybody remember that word of the day. All right, Robert, uh, this concludes our first episode. Uh, we're super excited for more episodes of Cracking the Code. Thank you for, for dropping some knowledge on us today, and we'll see you guys real soon on the next Cracking Code.